Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, candy. We're given an array of n children and for each child we have their rating in a ratings array. The rules are pretty simple even though they're a bit poorly worded in the problem statement, but for every single child we want to give them at least one candy. So I guess that's like a default that we can have. So in this case we have three children, we start with an array of one, 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 one candy for each child. But there's also a second rule here, and this is the part that's poorly worded, but any child that has a rating higher than its neighbors. And when we're talking about ratings, we're talking about the ratings array. This array is a second array. I guess you could say it's the candy array. But a child like this one, which has a rating of two, clearly has a rating higher than its neighbor. So we don't necessarily know how much candy this child is going to receive or how much uh, candy this child is going to receive either. But we know for sure this guy is going to have more candy because they have a higher rating. Similarly, this child has a higher rating than its neighbor. It doesn't even have a left neighbor, and this one didn't even have a right neighbor, but it does have more or a higher rating than the middle guy. So this one is also going to get more candy than the middle person. Now, the middle person is smaller than both of its neighbors. So we don't know how much candy they're gonna have, but we don't need to give them extra candy. And in this problem, we're trying to actually minimize the total number of candy we give to the children while still following these rules. And then it becomes pretty simple because of course the middle child is going to have the minimum number of candy, which is always gonna be one. The left child is gonna have the minimum number of candy that we can give them, and we can't give them a candy of one because they have a higher rating than their right neighbor. So we have to give them a candy of two. We could give them more like three or four, but why do that when we're trying to minimize the candy that we hand out? Same thing for the right child here. We give them a candy of two. So two plus one plus two is going to be five. That's going to be the result for this example. The second example is pretty similar, but we run into an interesting edge case. What happens if the candies are actually equal? Well, the middle child does not have more candy than the right child, but it does have more candy than the left child. So we don't know how much candy they're gonna get, but we know for sure this child is gonna have more candy than the left child. And we know that the left child is probably gonna have candy of one because we're trying to minimize it. Therefore, the middle child is gonna get candy of two. What about the right child? It has the same candy as its left neighbor. Should we give it two candies or can we give it one candy? Well, in this problem, we can actually give it one candy because while it's equal to the left neighbor, it's not greater than the left neighbor. The rating is not greater than the left neighbor. So we don't have to give them extra candy. Now, if this was a three, we'd probably have to give this guy a candy of three because it's a rating is higher than the left neighbor. Once you understand the rules, the problem isn't crazy hard, but there is some intuition that we need to pick up, which I'll try to explain. First, quickly, just to better understand the problem, assume we had a array like this. Like these are the ratings, two, 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 two. Basically, they're all equal. What would be the candy we give each child in this case? Well, it's easy. We just give them one, one, one because none of them have a higher rating than their neighbors. Now, what if we make it a bit more interesting? What if it's in increasing order? Two, three, four, five. How do we know how much candy to give this person? Well, we start at the left because it's a natural spot to start, but notice about the left position, it doesn't have a left neighbor, so that's good, and it does have a right neighbor. So the first thing, to probably try here is to just take this guy and compare it with the right neighbor. Well, its rating is less, so that's fine. We can keep this guy with a candy of one, the minimum amount. Now we look here. Well, let's first compare with the left. It's clearly greater than the left. So while the default value would have been a one, we know for sure we have to have this value, one plus one, so at the minimum, this person needs at least two candy. Well, now let's look at the right person here. Well, three is not greater than four. So this rating is probably good. Now looking at four, it's greater than its left neighbor, but not greater than its right neighbor. So at the minimum, it's gonna need two plus one, 
three candies. Same for this guy. It's going to need three plus one candies, so four candies. This is not greater than its right neighbor. This one doesn't even have a right neighbor, but it does have a left neighbor, and it's greater than the left neighbor, so it needs more candy. Now, it seems like we can solve this problem in one pass, but this was a very particular case where the values, the ratings are in increasing order. In the opposite case, what if the values are in decreasing order? Five, four, three, two. Well, and let's try again going left to right. We know we could actually go in reverse order because then the values would be in the same order as this. And we know that, that this approach did work. So theoretically, doing this in reverse order should work. But what happens if we try it from left to right? Well, here we see five is greater than its right neighbor. So we know for sure this guy needs more candy than this guy, but we don't even know how much candy is this one going to get anyway. Like, uh, let's just assume one, like that's the default value for all of these, right? Let's assume one. Okay, well, we know this guy's going to get more than this. So, okay, I guess I'll put a two over here. But I'm really not sure because now when we move to the next position, we're at four, we look and see, okay, well, I'm not greater than the left neighbor, but I am greater than the right neighbor three. So at the very least, I need more than one candy. I need to have at least two candy here. But now you kind of see the problem, right? We have two candies here and two candies here. That's not going to work. This one should have more than this guy. So what do we do? Like, one theoretical approach is, okay, we looked at this element. Now, when we look at the second element, how about we have to come back and revisit this one? And then when we look at the third element, we have to revisit all of these. Well, that's going to be nested loops and that's going to be N squared. That's not the best approach. There is a better way. And the hint is that with this approach, we're going left to right. With this approach, it would probably be better to go right to left. And the general case where we have values in not increasing or decreasing order, but they're like random, like now we have a three, now we have a five, now we have a six, now back to two. In the general case, like this example, what we're going to do is initialize all of the values with one. So we're going to start at the beginning, but the approach is going to be this. We're going to first go left to right. When we do go left to right, as we learned with this example, it's pretty easy when we just compare every value with the value to the left of it. Because when we are doing that, we've already gone through all the other values to the left. So we can be pretty sure about the value that we place here, about the quantity of candies. But we don't necessarily know, like looking at the right neighbor, for example, from four, we know four is greater than three. So this should have more candy than this. But we don't even know how much candy this should have yet until we've gone through the entire array. So basically, in the first pass, we're ensuring that any particular value will have more candy than its left neighbor if the rating is greater than the left rating. And then we're going to do the same thing going from right to left. We're going to ensure that this guy has more candy than its right neighbor if the rating is greater than the right neighbor. And I'll quickly go through this. Starting at five, doesn't have a left neighbor. Four has a left neighbor, but it's less than the left neighbor. This is also less than the left neighbor. This is greater than the left neighbor. So at the very least, this should have a candy of two. This is also greater than the left neighbor. At the very least, it should have a candy of three. This is not greater than the left neighbor. We can leave it with a candy of one. So this is not the result quite yet, but this guarantees that anyone that's greater than the left neighbor will have more candy. Now we just have to make that same thing true for everyone with a right neighbor. So now we're going to go in reverse order. This one does not have a right neighbor. We leave it with a rating of one. This one has a right neighbor and it's greater than the right neighbor. So what do we do? Should we add to this? No, because it's already a greater candy. It's already more candy than the right neighbor, so we're good. We don't have to do anything here. Looking at this guy, five is not greater than six. Don't need to do anything here. Three is not greater than five. Don't do anything. Four is greater than three, so we need to make sure that this has more candy than the right neighbor. They're both equal right now, so let's increment this to two. And here, lastly, five is greater than four. We need more candy than two, so we're going to put a three here. Now, you take all these values, total them up, and return them. I think it's something like 12. And clearly, we were able to do this in one, two passes. 
And then if you want to sum up all these numbers, I guess that could be another pass. But overall, the time complexity is going to be big O of N, no extra memory needed. Now let's code it up. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is initialize the array of candy. I would call it candy, but that's what the function is. So I'm just going to call it array. It's going to be initialized with all ones. It's going to be the same length as the length of ratings because that tells us how many children we have. We're going to make the first pass going left to right. We're going to actually skip the first index because we know that it doesn't even have a left neighbor. And this is the part where we're comparing every index to the left neighbor. So I'm going to start at index one, skipping index zero. And now I'm going to make that comparison. I'm going to check is the rating at I so here is the rating at i greater than the rating at i minus one does it have a greater rating than the left neighbor if it does it needs more candy than the left neighbor so on the first pass we can keep it simple and just give it more candy than the left neighbor by one so just take uh, the left neighbor's candy like this and then add one to it so that's simple enough now we're going to do something very similar going from right to left so uh, when we start at the right we're actually going to skip the rightmost index because it doesn't have a right neighbor so how do we do that well we're going to start at the last index which would be length minus one so we're going to start at length minus two because we want to skip the last index and we're going to go in reverse order up until the beginning of the array this is how you do it in python and now we're going to check the opposite thing is the rating at i greater than the rating of its right neighbor i plus one if that's the case we want the candy at index i to be greater than its right neighbor so you might think can we just do uh, its right neighbor plus one just like this well actually no because and this is a very easy spot to make a bug. I'll quickly go back to the drawing explanation. Remember here, when we started, uh, we were going left to right. There was already a three placed here. And now we're going right to left. We're looking at six. Six has a higher rating than its right neighbor, two. So should we take the rating or the number of candy for two and add one to it and then move it over here? That would be a two over here. No, we shouldn't do that because why would we ever want to make the candy smaller? We never want to do that. This needed three candy because its left neighbor has two candy. So basically, we're going to always take the maximum of this value and whatever we were going to place here. So going back to the code, actually what I'm going to put here is the max of itself and it's uh, the other value we were going to place here. It's right neighbors candy plus one. And the reason we only have to do that on the second pass is because we already filled in some values for the left pass. We didn't have to do that here because they were initially just a bunch of ones and that works out. Now, that is, believe it or not, the entire code. The only thing left for us to do is actually total up all the candy that we distributed. You could have had a separate variable for that and just incremented it every time like we execute one of these, but it's probably easier just to take the sum of the array before we return it. And I think this is a lot more readable anyway, even though it's, I guess, slightly less efficient. But now let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.